I'm going to pick up our next news piece. So this one, it's going to get a little bit technical, but please bear with us. So there's been a major breakthrough in plastic lenses. So when you when we're talking about VR improving, we need VR to get better. We're really talking about two different things. You have the hardware, so the actual headsets need to get a little bit better. And the software, people are making better content for the headsets that exist. We, we talk a lot about software updates, these good games that are coming out, advancements in game design. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the hardware. So there has been an update in how VR lenses are going to be able to be made. So in, in really simple terms, in headsets, in order for us to get better headsets, we can start putting more and more screens all around our face, right? Or we can get lenses to make it seem like we have high def screens in a much wider radius, but the screen itself is only a really little. So there's this new type of lens called a pancake lens where it's really small, it fits just in front of your eyes, and it's able to trick your brain into thinking that there's a much wider field of view. And it's able to give you a much wider field of view for a lot less money. And so that this could really advance things in making VR headsets lighter and cheaper and a lot higher uh, definition screens, which I mean across the board is great. Now, it's very early in the process, like literally they just submitted the patents. But if this is true, it could mean really big things. What do you guys think? Kaylee, what, what, how does this strike you? You're someone that doesn't do a ton of gaming. You're doing more. You're doing business. You're doing work. You're doing art in VR. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, um, I don't really know. I think my my the thing that I'd focus on the most. I'd what I'd want to know is as long as the, I think, the durability of headsets didn't get any worse and didn't become like flimsy or delicate. That would be all I would be concerned about is because just because I, I'm really interested in um, experimenting with performance and dancing and where like, you know, sort of that untethered experience where I'm, I kind of want to be jumping around a lot. And if it, if it falls off or if I'm placing it down, things like that, like it, I think if, if any of it's going to change, I think as long as it, it didn't get it, it didn't get any, any more delicate, really. <laughs> well, um, that's kind that's, of what my, where my, where my like, focus would be on, I think. That's a good thing to point out, because Adam, these are going to be plastic, aren't they? They are plastic, yeah. So there's a concern mm. there, because I mean, plastic, it's, it's saying they're saying it's gonna be lighter, cheaper, easier to make. But does that mean these are going to be more scratchable? I don't know. But I would imagine, especially yeah. if you're someone who wears glasses, glass against plastic, you're going to be risking uh, scratching these up probably I would think fairly easily though there might be coatings they put on them and things we don't really know yet it's pretty early to be speculating too heavy but when you hear plastic it definitely always the first thing is like oh crap you gotta be able to see through it is that gonna cause a durability issue so I'm curious there that uh, obviously though any any improvement is huge that's funny because people thought the PSVR lenses were plastic uh they're one of the few that don't use the fresnel design where there aren't all these concentric little rings across them and to me still today those and the gear vr lenses were some of the best lenses ever made for vr and it shocks me that we still don't use lenses like that in modern headsets because so many <laughs> of these new ones have these lenses that have all these concentric rings and whenever there's a dark scene and a bright light you get all this smearing all these god rays you get all this stuff that just pulls you out of the experience so I hope that this can change that. And I don't know, maybe this will also help get us back towards OLED screens. I know that's a lot to hope for from something like this, but I just hope maybe this, if it's a smaller screen, maybe we can get more OLEDs back because I miss the true blacks of the old headsets. <laughs> well, you know, that's what they're offering. So who knows? The future is now, I guess. <laughs> but once we get past the lenses, is there any other big v uh, hardware improvements that we really need? Like that's the main thing, right? It's just the screen density. Is there any other improvements you'd like to see? Uh, well, I guess it kind of gets into the question, like, if we have these kind of lenses, do we still need all this plastic on our face? Because in their, in their renderings I looked at, they were showing like a pair of glasses with a little screen in front of them. It wasn't <laughs> this huge thing. So is it possible we could get some kind of like cyberpunk little glasses that cover the outside world? Because we still need to isolate from the outside world in VR. You yeah. don't want to see the world around the lenses. But if they covered your eyes, yet they were that little, they were that lightweight, it would make it so much more approachable for all the people who are afraid to put this big hunk of plastic on their face because they think they're going to look dumb. Uh, 
I think the the size, weight, look, and then of course the lenses. If that if all that comes with it, then we're talking the future of VR that we've been waiting for. We're talking actual glasses you just put on and you play the game, and it's such a better experience than this heavy hot thing I have on my face right now. Well, we can we can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.